great job of, of having our guys ready to compete, and uh, it was in every drill. Uh, we had good on good. Uh, we had special teams good on good. Everything was about competition, getting ourselves better, because uh, we got a you know, really, really uh, uh, a big man's fight uh, this next Friday night. And so we did a great job with that. Again, just uh, praise the coaches and uh, Coach Joseph for the plan that we had put together uh, to really get these guys in the right spot on this short week. So it's been really, really good. Kids have, have, uh, have put in extreme amount of time extra on film, done as much as we can physically. It's a fine balance between how you're going to get these guys ready to play, to be uh, have the knowledge of the schemes that they're going to see or have to defend, and also be fresh enough to be able to do that. Uh, but we've already talked about that. We're blocking out any noise. Don't care about that it's a, a road game and it's on the East Coast or any of those things. Just getting our guys ready to play. And uh, they've responded extremely well. They're taking care of their bodies well. So very, very excited about them. So again, I'm just, uh, just very, very lucky to have such good coaching staff and uh, have such great players to be putting the work in every day. And it's been really, really good. Fire away with any questions. Why is Friday's game a big needs fight? Uh, just, I know their staff well enough, know their head coach well enough. Uh, he's all about toughness, which everyone says, but you see it on film. So everybody says, you've got to be the toughest team on the field. Everyone says it, right? But you turn their film on, that's who they are. And so they're very good up front. Their offensive line is big, thick, physical. I mean, they, they line up and they'll run power and physical power game. Actually, they'll run wildcat. They'll run the quarterback. Turns into 11 on 11 football, which is like option football. And so they, I mean, they ran the ball downhill really well against Ohio State in the second half. And so it, it's a, I mean, trust me, they got plenty of skill and their quarterback's really good. <clears throat> Doesn't matter which one we see, they're all really good. But uh, but they want to be extremely tough at the line of scrimmage, and it shows up on film. So we have our hands uh, our hands full, and but that's what we're preparing for to play. Uh, you know, I've never worked with him personally. I know him well enough through a lot of uh, other people. And like I said, first of all, he understands the league really well. He understands the, the methodology of how to turn a program around, which he's done there before. And that was all done the same way. Because I know a lot of those players, and, and I worked with those guys and I was at Rutgers, his former players, and it was all about the grit. And so that's what he knows about this, this conference. And uh, uh, he's very impressive as a coach. Their whole staff is very impressive. And... Uh, uh, like I said, you just know what you're up against when you play them. Hey, that's pretty cool, wasn't it? That was awesome to see Malcolm out there. I tell you one thing about Malcolm, the number one thing is nothing's too big for him. There, was in, there wasn't a moment ever where we thought going into the game like, whew, do we need to kind of do this? We need, maybe, maybe just let him sit for a series, then, then ease him in. It's like, no, just go ahead and go. And nothing's too big for him. He likes to play football like that. And we talked to these guys, you know, a lot. You know, like about this upcoming game is, you know, what really it really sucks is uh, is uh, Tuesdays in February at 5 a.m. doing mat drills. That's not really why you came to Lincoln, Nebraska. You came to Lincoln, Nebraska playing games here. You play here to go on big time road games on the road. That's why you came to do. So we're excited to be able to go play for the next one because that's the whole fun part is are, are these 12 guarantees and that's what matters. And Malcolm took that in. And he just likes football. He loves football. I tell you, he's a guy that you know had a chance. It wasn't a surprise when the ball popped into his hands and ran back for a touchdown because he anticipates that stuff. Some guys are just hooked up the right way, and that's who he is. So love, love the young man, and just so happy he's doing well for him like that. Is he compared to anybody that you recruited over the years uh, in terms of just being a guy. Oh, there's been a lot. Uh, he has a, uh, uh, probably even stature a little bit smaller. But he's got he's got some barren miles in him, like that, which is that 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 compliment. Now to say that that's like this. That's like being compared to because. You know, Baron Miles was the most competitive, uh, probably the most competitive player that I've ever coached in my life, period. And uh, so with the way Baron played, uh, you know, we saw Baron block punts. You saw him cover people. He was undersized in matchups sometimes. It didn't care. Uh, so he's a, that, I would compare him to that. But again, that's easy on that for a second because uh, Baron did it for a long time. Which what's he do technically, like really, really well on the field? Like he's got the mindset and everything. Uh, the biggest thing he does on the field is, is that, that he's, he's a, a – uh, extremely capable and invested tackler like that is that he's not some guys are you know I'm a cover corner he does have to cover people but he has no no problem uh, putting his face in the fan either and so that's the thing that stands out the most because you get nervous about anybody on the football team that, that doesn't want to tackle or can't tackle that makes you nervous because in this league they're gonna make the corners tackle 
that's just the way it is. They're going to they're going to block the tacklers and they're going to make the corners have to tackle. So the guy will do that. He runs really well down the field. They caught one ball on him kind of down the field. He had great coverage. They kind of dropped over his head. That happens. So we just go ahead and play. But the, his ability to be tough enough to, to, to tackle is what counts the most. How do you think the adjustments that you guys made the simplification of schemes help the guys on Saturday? Well, the thing that stood out from Saturday the most was our number one goal. We had two goals. Number one thing: get lined up and play fast, because there are so many clips on film of teams not lined up. I mean, there was, you know, you saw against Cincinnati, they had a walk-in touchdown because they weren't lined up. All, it's all over the film. Sometimes there's 14 guys on the film. Sometimes there's 11 on the film, but only four of them are lined up. It's all over the place. So, our, so we went 100% in alignment of getting lined up. We didn't have any like that. We did not say we played it perfect once we got there, but we got lined up. So that was the thing that, that transferred over and then be able to get the calls in. And then we were able to, as the game went along, even though they were going fast, then we were able to call different things. But early in the game, we just went same, same a lot. So whatever the call was before, we called the same call again. And the kids, that, that I think, gave them a chance to breathe and get lined up instead of always, because the panic would always come if you're ever looking over to get a call and guess what's going on over here? They're lining up. So that was a part to try to get faster on. So, so you, you say you were lined up right every time? What's that? You were lined up right every time? Yeah, as far as our cleats were in the ground. Our cleats were in the ground. There might be time like that. I'm sure maybe sometimes simply maybe saw the nickel insider should have been outside or something like that. But uh, uh, it, they were, our feet were in the ground. You never went through and just went, oh, my God, we're not lined up. Number two's not covered. One's uncovered. The tight end, so they got lined up really well in that spot. And then, like I said, there's always maybe some shades or some things that could be better for us. But very happy with that. Let's go 96%. So, well, I don't give myself in a pickle if you find something. <laughs> got me. I, you know, uh, uh, I had, you know, it, it was funny. I had a talk with my dad is that uh, uh, Matt Millen did the, did the game. So I talked with him a lot the day before the game, and I talked to him a lot on game day, and he talked to me about, about Ty. He goes, goes, seems like he's very talented. He goes, there's probably more in him. So I, me and Ty sat down and talked about that exact comment uh, with him. I said, and, I, and I go, he's right. I said, there's more in you like that, and, and he, he had more in him on Saturday. What he did was he always plays hard. There's not an issue with playing hard, but he made more plays. And that was the part that he finished some things up on that was good for on Tad. So uh, Ty has been one of the reasons that uh, myself being able to transition into this role has been doable because of Ty. Because he has been a leader. He's taken coaching, whatever that, that. He's not, he's not, he's not a palms up guy. And he's just all in. So that's, that's helped us a lot. It was, it, you know, obviously, it was extremely happy. Uh, that was a huge play for us in the game, and and uh, you know, me and Joey work close on all these things right there, and we have a kind of a, a plan on how we'd like to get about things. And Coach Connors did a great job with it, uh, with organizing it on the field. We had to trying to get best guys in the spot for us right there. But again, Coach Connors deserves all the credit. Um, you know, we, we I'm still heavily involved in discussing things with him to help him behind the scenes, but he runs that part of it. But uh, it was a textbook play of how to block a punt and how to scoop and score like that. The, the last one that I was part of was in that same end zone was against, uh, uh, I think it was Missouri, and Shamley blocked one, and Adam Ickes ran it in for a touchdown in the, about, the, about the exact same spot. So that was that, so the memories popped up on that one. But uh, that, they talk about energizing the crowd. And then in general, the, the numbers are block a punt, 90% chance you win the game. So far, we've blocked two punts, and we've won two games. So that, that, that holds true. That'd be 100% simple right now for us. Why did it look like hard? What's that? Why did it look like the defense just played hard? Probably a couple things to look at. One, came off a of bye week and so like that. So they had a chance to kind of flush things that were, you know, some negative vibes for us right there. And they went out. I, I think that they felt really, really good about what we were doing every time. I don't think there was ever. When we were on the sidelines, we had very creative conversations as staff and with our players. If you watch us, we're always with our players. and But most of it was talking about minute things. And it wasn't like this, this, and this happened. We got to change this. So they were so dialed into the calls and what we were doing and getting lined up. It just kind of puts you at ease you know, for us right there. And they just wanted to play. And, and, and so I think they were just very, very relaxed. And we just need to stay on top of that to be able to keep that going for us right now. And I, and I know they will. They'll play really hard. I thought they played, you know, I mean, Luke Reimer covered, you know, the, the, I love the play he made on the interception, which is a big time play because it was a textbook, no launching, no targeting, 
made, made an extremely great play. It was unbelievable. But the play he made on the tight end on our sideline, I think it was the first quarter, was probably a more magnificent play of getting up because their tight end was really good. 88 was a dude. Uh, if, you, if you saw him and you walked by him, like, that, 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 that's what they look like. And, and so he would, that's a tough matchup. And so the play he made on that. So both those guys, him and Nick, are able to cover well. They get into matchups for us, and that helps us a, a bunch in the situation. We're very happy with their coverage. I thought the linebackers played very, very well. Coach Rude was outstanding with his preparation, and then also was outstanding with rotation because you saw other guys get in the game also at that. So, the, so, so Luke and Nick did not play the entire game. So Va came in, did a great job for us right there, and Chris did too. Uh, no, in fact, the first thing we said to him was same emphasis, doesn't change. There's never a time it's like, you know what, if you get semi lined up, we'll, we should be good like that. Never happens in the history of college football. So our number one thing, even if they're not as fast, you have to get yourself lined up, cleats in the ground, then you're confident. So we, we always speak on the communication breeds confidence. So you'll see him talking like crazy. If you ever watch our punt team, just watch the conversations that go on. Watch the front line, watch the shield, watch the finger pointing, all those things right there. So we are just, we're we are so much on top of them for communication to be able to talk those things out because these guys do some things. It's very they're, they're very similar in the way that they create some things that are very difficult. So the same method, methodology is what we'll be doing in this when we get lined up and keep it simple. It's short week, so they're, they're, in a short week, it's very, very hard to add things in uh, scheme-wise. Coach, their quarterback situation is a little unclear right now. Almost three guys mm -hmm. taking a snap. What, what are the discussions that Well, all three of them carry the ball. So that doesn't shock us too much with, uh, with what can happen there. All three of them can carry it. Obviously, uh, uh, Bedrill is someone that I know. I'm good friends with his dad. You know, he got injured in, in uh, camp, but he came back and played against Ohio State. So I'm assuming he's going to be fully cleared and able to go anticipate him starting maybe. The other two guys, you know, uh, one has a foot injury, two does. And so and they're all of them are really good players. They all, they all can throw it, and they can all run the ball. And the quarterback run game is always a huge concern. So once, it, once the quarterback carries the ball, that means I thought, that means they got 10 blockers and they got one more guy. So just if you crunch the numbers on that one right there, you need all 11 to stop them. So really when, when the quarterback's running the ball, it's like you're playing Air Force. And so they, they, they're very well schemed in that area. So it's impressive by their staff. Uh, you know, it, 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 pretty easy to say that, that extremely happy. Uh, that the locker room was great afterwards. Uh, I thought Coach Joseph and the kids did a great job of 24 hour rule of being able to enjoy it for a little bit. We moved on pretty quick, you know, to the, to the next phase because of where we were. But, uh, the, but their, their, their spirit's been great. But again, it's, and it's been different this week, there's no doubt about that. But give these guys credit. I told you that last week. I said, wow. I said, these guys come in every time. There, there was never like we never had to wind them up like we got to go or never walked out of meetings saying like, man, that, that was like pulling teeth. That was, No one's talking. That was miserable. So they're, it's, that, that's what good humans they are. Now they're just a little bit happier humans. Well, I'm sure he'd be extra motivated. Always, you always are to play against a team where you were once part of. This is what I know about the Vedral fam family across the board. That is some tough dudes. I, the whole family, he's the same way. If you're a Vedral, all you know is like that. You don't want to fight a Vedral, okay? They're tough. And so uh, they're really, really tough dudes, and, and uh, you don't want to and playing against like that. So we know, like I said, as I said, it's going to be a, it's going to be a grown man's fight. We've got a lot going. Here we go right here. That's okay. Repeat that question. I didn't quite understand one of the figures. I see where he's coming from with the comment for us like that. Uh, what you say to him and what's going on. Sometimes the young men was going through their head, you know, completely at that time. I know defensively, uh, they've really taken messages really well from what we're talking to him about. So like that's been a, a plus uh, with him. I said um, with the how we set the game plan up for him last week for him, I think that allowed for him to really think about more about doing their one job to lead to the end of a win uh, for him. There was nothing said on the sidelines, you know, where all of a sudden he went up two scores with five minutes to go or one score. There was like never something said like, you guys know this, this stuff has turned bad before. We just, we just kept coaching, kept doing, just keep playing. And so I think those kids responded really well to that.
yeah, it was a... That's pretty cool. Yeah. What's that? I'll be on the field. Uh, I think it just helped us a little bit with, uh, again, face to face. When I, when I can walk down and talk to the D line, linebackers, safeties, corners, and then it, however you cut it, it was a lot easier. I had to build talk. Hey, Coach Fish, got you. Know, I would talk. Yeah, we have headphones on. We could talk to him right here, and then we'd draw stuff up together. Here's what's going on. Here's what's going on. Changes like that because we made some changes at halftime. There was, there was constant communication. So the halftime force came in right there, and then the kids were unbelievable at halftime. We made some changes at halftime because they'd taken some things, and they'd, they'd, we'd probably showed them some things they hadn't seen before, and then and they were able to come back and answer that. So that part was really, really cool about that. But for that reason, I'd rather be up. I can see better. It's calmer uh, for us right there. But I do think that uh, just being the confidence of the kids, I felt I was very calm during the calling of the game. It wasn't an emotional call game because the kids were doing – what they were supposed to do. They hit us on a crack screen, on a corner blitz. They chipped him on the corner. Some things happened, the play got out. There's no reason to lose your mind. Here's what happened. They, they, it's, it's kind of one of those touches. It's like, nice call. You kind of had us on that one. So able to rebound with that, so that part was good. Anything?